You ready? There is a connection between the paranormal, UFOs, and the myths of ancient history. The clues are scattered across the landscape from a forbidden past, maybe even in your own backyard. There is a connection between the true nature of our reality, consciousness, and the unexplained. I'm Carl the Crusher. Let's explore the unknown. Where are we going, James? Up, we're going past Paradise Lake up to a mound that shouldn't even exist. Yeah. Technically. Check it out. There's a weird geological mound up there where nothing grows on it. The rock faces all look really strange. And it strangely, oddly looks like a big dome or saucer shape or mound shape. So we're going to take up a bunch of equipment and professional gear and investigate this place. It's going to be awesome. Let's do it. So the last couple of days we've been working on projects and in locations where we're actually not allowed to film or at least what we do film we can't reveal what we were doing or where or why uh, but that's okay today we're going to this spot that is really cool uh, the history of this location is so fascinating and the team that we're taking up here i don't think James, do you think anybody has ever actually gone and researched this spot before? No, no and if they have, they haven't let the public know about it. Yeah, uh, the mystery that and the intrigue around this spot goes way back. Uh, it has to do with it uh, having to do with the in-between or an, another dimensional place in reality. Uh, we'll see. We're going to go up there and check it out. That, is, that stands out. Lurking ominously through the tree line in the distance. So that's weird. It looks volcanic. First impressions. First impressions are it's volcanic to me. Uh, wow. Brand new battery pack. They come out of the truck and it's dead. This has been happening the whole trip, right? I charged all my stuff last night. I have eight batteries. Yeah. And one's already dead. So right through there is the big weird mountain or bulge that we're gonna go try to hike up to or to the top of, but it's like three quarters of a mile of scrambling over big ankle snapping boulders. So we're gonna do our best. Supposedly there is um, some monolithic spires on the top and interesting things. So I brought a radiation detector, a tri-filled meter and probably I don't know, maybe 20 pounds worth of water and calories in my backpack. So yeah, I'm gonna kind of billy going up the hill today. <sighs> Woo -wee. This is gonna be brutal. If we plan on hiking all the way to the top of that, over this kind of environment, someone could easily get hurt. So this is decision-making time for the group. Basically, it was October 2010, my first week up there. On Skinwalker Ranch? On Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, me and another officer up there together, and we had a routine down where one guy would do a morning run. I'm gonna go this way. And uh, the other guy would get a report from the night before. And so the guy comes back from the run and he goes, hey, Chris, I think we found, I found some weird prints on top of the Mesa. And I'm like, well, let's go check him out. So we hiked up on top of the mesa and it had just kind of rained the night before a little bit so the ground was a little bit wet not that much and sure as shit we see these big big size wolf canine prints and they're weird but what's weird about it is that this thing went from four feet to two feet for about maybe a hundred foot of two feet and then our so brain, it went upright on two legs yeah it looked like it, from the prints it looked like and that's where the three foot stride came from and we're like what the hell is that I know I'm from Kansas. I'm used to farm animals and stuff like that and coyotes. I'm like, this is something different. So we call our guys and say, you know, the advice is be careful. <laughs> so we're like, okay. So that night we had the mindset, like we're gonna go capture this wolf or this animal because we're curious. So we go out that night, me and another officer with the dogs and uh, we were hiking all night long, all over the property and it was slightly raining a little bit. 
we're building like makeshift campfires trying to draw this animal in and the whole night we felt like we we're being watched you know we could feel like the you know, sensation of something there and the dogs were acting very suspicious clinging you know they're like right next to us when normally they're out running around trying to grab you know rabbits and stuff <clears throat> so we knew something wasn't right so it's about three o'clock in the morning two two or three o'clock in the morning we're like you know what let's start making our way back so we start backtracking our tracks Behind our tracks is these wolf print tracks. This thing had been following us all night long. Right. And we're now we're like, okay, now we're now we're no longer a tactical advantage here. Right. So we're like white light, trying to get back to Homestead One. And we're getting around that triangle area now, they call it. Getting around the bend there, and I'm about 50, maybe 60 feet ahead of my partner, and he says, Stop. I hear something. It's a full moon night. I'll never forget this because it replays in my head every single night. <clears throat> the, the, the clouds come over the moon. And as I'm turning around, I, it feels like time is compressing, like I'm walking in water. Yes. And out of the ditch, we all we hear this guttural howl, growl come out, and it sounds something like I've never heard before, like so deep and guttural, but also until a howl. And out of the ditch, I see this giant black canine, I guess wolf, the size of a deer, leap over the mound, hit the road, and travel west and the dogs go after I go after the dogs because I'm thinking they're gonna rumble and this thing's gonna kill them okay. so me and the officer are behind this thing and it just in a blink it disappears the dogs stop look at us we look at right in front of your eyes right in front of your eyes absolutely and the, awesome and the dogs looked at us like what the hell was that and then we're like shocked you know right and then so that happens and we do the report and in the initial report I put I didn't even see the, the wolf because I was I, was, I had a, a, a cute clearance still for the DOE and I was planning to go back there to DOE and I said if I put that down on paper I'm gonna lose my clearance nobody's gonna right. believe me you know this is in 2010 and so um you know later on now I'm more open about it because it happened you know I have evidence to back it up well then in 2015 while I'm there by myself now you know in 2011 we went by ourselves in 2015 I'm sitting in a lawn chair and I'm by myself with the dogs, and out of nowhere, I hear that guttural howl growl behind me. And I come out of the chair, gun out, and it was there for a second, and then like letting me know, like, hey, I'm still here. Yeah, right, right here behind you, bud. Yeah, it was right. yeah. we are way up on this mountain now. The boulders are starting to change shape. It's clearing out the vegetation. It's starting to thin, and we're getting big piles we're climbing over. But we have a storm rolling in. Almost like something is trying to prevent us from scaling this mountain. Uh, if it starts to accumulate too much or look heavy or if I feel any sprinkles, I'm going to take some of the group and insist that we head back off the mountain because honestly, it feels like snow might start rolling in and that would be not safe. I was just looking at these game trails all converge right here and right as we walk up where they are. Here, like another battery died. Second battery died. That's so weird. In less than what? Minutes? They're supposed to last all day. Eight hours, yeah. And you're not filming, you're just taking I'm still just taking photos. Still photos. And then it's just draining. Yeah. Draining. Well I have a solar solar charger, but yeah, we're getting up here in elevation. Another one? We only made it like a hundred yards up the hill and you have a third battery die. I'm down to two batteries. That's insane. I've never had that happen. This is weird. Okay. My phone's doing alright. This battery's down. What is the point right now? The one you're putting in now? That is weird. Something's drawing the energy out of all of his camera batteries. Trees don't even want to grow up there, James. They don't. There are no trees on the There are? There are none. There's no trees. Wow. Just over 10,000 feet in elevation. 10,820 feet. Everybody's coming back down the mountain, and I'm guessing they saw what I saw, which is these dark clouds rolling in. Oh, yeah. 10,847 feet elevation, it says right there on the phone. So, yeah, there's a storm rolling in. Uh, it's pretty exposed up here, especially if there's lightning or snow. We're gonna get out of here. It's like uh, something doesn't want us up here. Plus, Charlie just used his compass 
and it was telling us the wrong direction north so we got weird anomalous directions uh, easy to get lost up here so something strange in the neighborhood guys so we're gonna head back down plus we need to go down and find Sid he stopped to take a rest so the last thing we want is to get separated up on the mountain in a storm uh, and get all spread apart so we're gonna head back down now all right found Sid there he is like a wanderer in the wild Sid here, he has grown up here his whole life. He's worked in the mines and crawled around underground up here in the mountains of the Uinta Basin. Hey, there was Chris listening to us. Chris Bartell, he worked at Nellis Air Force Base and um, also uh, around Area 51. And then he was uh, head of security at Skinwalker Ranch for several years. And now works together with me on many of these projects, going and exploring mysterious locations in the Uinta Basin and all over the state of Utah, Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, the desert, desert southwest. It's full of mysteries, full of paranormal stuff, full of UFOs, full of Bigfoot, you name it. It's all here. It's weird. Noticing all these deer or elk tracks running through here and then there's this pond. I bet if we sat here long enough, quiet enough, we would see all kinds of animals come up here to get a drink. So like we got stormed out and came back down, but Mike made it, your name's Mike, right? Yeah. Yeah, you made it all the way to the top. Oh, wow, yeah. There is like a whole spire. You see the Spanish put that there? Yeah. As a site marker. Oh yeah, like a monument. Survey marker. Survey marker. See the pointer rock? Uh-huh. Oh yeah. All that stuff. And we had kind of a scare coming back down because we couldn't find Michelle and she accidentally wandered down to the trees and onto the road there. If you look at that one. And we found her. It's got oh, a window yeah. in it. Oh yeah. Like a line of sight. Yeah. With that pointer rock. So the third monument was in line. And it's no longer there. Somebody tore it down. Does that point toward, back towards Vernal? So if you look here, these are volcanic hydrothermal vents. And you were saying there's quartz in there that's like all cooked? There's some, yeah. Weird. Volcanic vents. So that whole thing is like a dome Could that, be. Boom, that oh, like oh, maybe, yeah. yeah, that may have bulged up there. That's that's what I suspect. That's so fascinating. Are we going to encounter anything further down here? Do you have your gun? No. Boom. That's deep, man. Yeah, that's another drum. That's crazy. That's Boom. 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 It's like a huge drum, yeah. Wow, dude. I'm kind of disappointed I don't. I have this little hand light that I use for police. Yeah. Pop this thing. Like, it's like this whole system. This kind of network of caves could be going under this entire... Oh, it is? Through the mountains. Through the mountains, all the way down. Absolutely. And there's like four directions too because we found that 